Bird Bar Place has been serving the Seattle community for more than 50 years. Named after the extraordinary Roberta Bird Bar, who is known for her work as an American civil rights activist, community leader, television personality, educator, and librarian. Organizationally, they aim to honor her legacy by challenging injustice and intolerance in the work they do. Their programs include a food bank, housing and energy assistance, and personal finance resources with special attention given to power shutoffs and evictions. With the help of funding from the Equitable Development Initiative, they're now able to redevelop the historic building that's been their operations hub for all those years and design the inside to be specific to client needs, a space that will bring an extra level of care to the people they serve. We caught up with their CEO, Andrea Capane sanderson to hear her take on what this partnership with EDI means to their team and how it helped to fund this redevelopment. Well, joining me today is Ms. Andrea Capane of Burr Bar Place. And really, we're going to be diving in to what Burr Bar is all about. And I want you to be able to kind of start at your beginnings with Burr Bar. You know, I came from the state of Washington. Um, I was doing policy work at the governor's office, Governor Gary Locke's office, and I was doing policy work, thankfully, on behalf of black Washingtonians. Mm. I was working with the Commission on African American Affairs, and it was really wonderful, even though it felt isolating, to be in that place in the state capitol where we get to prescribe policy on behalf of black Washingtonians, but we didn't get to see it implemented once it passed. So coming to Bird Bar Place 18 years ago offered me that opportunity to really see that legislation be put into action and see how it affected people every day. So I came here 18 years ago. I was on the ground. I was the chief operating officer when I started. Um, I learned and I knew about Bird Bar Place, formerly camp, when I was in the governor's office. So I had some familiarity when I got there. but. Gosh, when I really got there and I was on the ground and I was in the CD with the folks, it really warmed my heart and I felt like I was finally home. Mm -hmm. I felt like I came home 18 years ago and I've been home ever since. Our secret weapon is that I used to be a client. And when I sought services from energy assistance to food bank to rental assistance, I remember being in those halls. I remember completing those applications. I remember being on the phone with case managers. And I remember a level of exhaling because the service was there for me and I did get help. But I also remembered I didn't like sometimes the environment in which I got help. I didn't like how I was treated sometimes. I didn't like that I had to defend and make sort of this case for why I deserve support. Yeah. So every client that walks through our doors, I see myself in. I see as that 19 year old, that 20, 21, 22 year old with a young child that needs services. And so for me, when I think about the evolution of our services and I think about how we need to do better by community, I think about how it was for me and how it is for people walking through our doors today. So from customer service, we place a special emphasis now on hospitality. Mm. We will treat our clients with dignity and carry on the legacy of Camp Now Bird Bar Place, mm. but also to support our community, low-income communities, service with our community, for our community. Mm. And so we have a responsibility to connect with them, to have them engage in our services and our programming. How do you need our services versus what we're providing? And so every moment that we're serving our client is a moment to connect with them and understand what is it you want versus what we're providing. And we're gonna shift our programs and pivot to give them what they want. You know, what I appreciate about EDI is about this idea that we need to, right? In order to qualify for that grant to apply, you've gotta to center the voices of those most impacted. And I wish most funding sources or all funding sources to nonprofits center that as a value. And what we knew, Burr Bar Place being on the ground with our communities is that we understood in every moment in real time what our clients need from us and what they want from us. But also we had the difficulty of going back to funders and our contractors and trying to navigate between their requirements, their goals, their strategies, 
versus what the clients want. And oftentimes it did not compare. It did not mesh. EDI was a game changer for Bird Bar Place. EDI actually, it's a $12.8 million campaign for us to renovate our building. EDI was just 1.5 million of that. But by virtue of being able to say to private funding partners and other government partners, here's a model, here's what EDI did for us, unlocked a lot of possibilities for us. We use this as an example in philanthropy now. This is a government resource. We're telling philanthropy, here's how to do it, here's a model. When we say to philanthropy, here's how you can give us a seat at the table to be partners with you to solve the issues in our community, EDI is a mechanism. EDI is an example. EDI was one of the very first levels of funding that we got where we, it was access to capital to do what the client said they wanted. Mm. Right? It opened up a whole new sort of way of thinking about how we could go about our business. And in this case, we use EDI for our capital project to renovate our building. Our clients wanted more meeting space. Mm. Our clients wanted a warm space. Our clients want history and legacy maintained in the building for our black community. Our clients want to be treated with dignity. They want to come into our food bank and feel like they're walking into PCC, which is right up there in 23rd and Union. Why should there be any difference? The wood floors, the warm lighting, the racks and shelves of food, fresh food and food that you want, food that looks great, right? EDI is giving us a pathway to be able to do that for our community. Mm -hmm. And so if you came into the building pre-renovation, which is being renovated right now, you'd see a lot of unnecessary walls, which created silos, very small spaces that wasn't functional for human interaction in groups mm. or soft interaction in times of crisis. And so we're getting rid of all of that. We're removing those walls, we're widening hallways and doorways, we're putting in an elevator, yes. We're also making it warm and inviting and a sense of you belong here, a sense of this is you, a sense of we see you. Because it's on a historic register, we know we can't change the facade. So we're going to maintain that. But inside will be so much more different. We took the building, we took control of the building in the 1960s, right? Right as the civil rights movement was happening in Seattle, when we were organizing on behalf of black people and our rights and becoming self-sufficient and owning our voice, right? And teaching the world about anti-blackness. That began back then, not now. And so we want the building to support that. We want the building to, to memorialize that and to have a legacy and to repeat the tradition that began with Camp Now Bird Bar Place, right? And so that says less walls, that says more inviting, and that says you belong here. We have an elderly woman, black woman who we do home deliveries to every week from our food bank. And she said, all that I am and all that I became is because of that building in the CD, that camp, camp firehouse, which is now Bird Bar Place. And I'm excited about because eventually she will pass on, is that how do we honor our ancestors? How do we honor those who came before us? I stand on the shoulders of those who built camp and now Bird Bar Place. And I need to prepare a way for our descendants. So how can I work to be a good ancestor? So for me, I'm excited about having finally Treyana planted roots in the CD. Being a renter for the last 57 years has been unstable for our organization, has been unstable for a symbol that's been such a source of support for our black community. And what does, this, what does that say to the individuals in our black community if the organization that they seek inspiration and support from that we're not stable ourselves because we don't own our home. Mm. So the transfer of the deed from the city to Bird Bar Place last October, memorialize that. This is our home, we stand firm, even though with the neighborhood turnover, gentrification, we claim this as our home. It may not have been our home out of choice, right? Because redlining created a community within a community that was policed but we made it our home and we're pretty clear and absolute that this will continue to be our home no matter what the neighborhood looks like. We want every black person going forward to understand that this is a place where we see you, where you belong and you can claim it to be your own. And we wanna honor the people who came before us. 
So that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited that it's become a monument mm -hmm. and a living monument, not just a statue. Right. No, this is a living building and living services that we will provide for the rest of the community, but by and for black people. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Miss Andrea Capane. Thank you. Of Bird Bar Place. It's been beautiful to just dive in with you about your relationship to Bird Bar, Bird Bar's relationship to the community, and how the community voice helped to birth EDI. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely.